How many individuals know about the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program? There's a few, good. So what I wanted to do was to um, just give a brief introduction, and I'll make it relatively quick since I have about 10 minutes to speak. So we exist because of you, uh, plain and simple. We, we began, well, we were created in 1992, 1993 when breast cancer advocates went to the Hill, and they demanded more funding for a different and new innovative research for breast cancer. As I felt nothing had really changed in terms of treatment in about 40 years. So the appropriation came to the US Army Medical Research and Development Command, which is part of the DOD. And we're located about 53 miles, actually 52.5 miles north, northwest of here. Of course, it's about a three hour drive, but that's beside the point. <laughs> and so what's important to know is that every year, Individuals like yourself, you go to the Hill, and that's how our programs are started, and that's how our programs continue. Uh, so it's on an annual basis, year to year. And the research that we support, we have 30, currently have 33 different research programs, and each of those research programs comes with an appropriation, and that funding can only be used for that research program. And it's also important to know that in case someone complains, oh, why are you using DOD funds to fund this research, or oh, kidney research, or polycystic kidney disease? It's because the funds don't take away from the DOD budget. These appropriations actually add to the DOD budget. So we did a couple of things. We went to the, what at that time was the Institute of Medicine. We asked for some guidance, and of course they always give you more guidance than you asked for, but still there were two hallmarks that I'd like to speak to. One was that we should not just have a traditional peer review that looks at the technical merit and then say, okay, everything that scores really high gets funded. We were encouraged to have a programmatic review, and that's the second tier of review. And what that does is that basically takes the scientific meritorious proposals, research applications, biomedical research applications, and we look at it for impact. What is the relevance on that disease or condition, and what is the impact? What difference is this research going to make? So we don't have a pay line from the best going to the, till we run out of money. We actually do a comparison. And the other thing that, that um, has become a hallmark of our programs, all of our programs, is consumers. Individuals like yourself are involved in all aspects of the program cycle. And we also have a review criterion of both peer review and programmatic review for impact. So impact and relevance to that disease and condition. And I hope he doesn't mind, but I just ran into James Myers this morning, and he just recently served on one of our peer review panels for, for kidney disease. So it's important for you to know that you going to the Hill and asking for these funds um, does make its way to us, and we do listen to you when we incorporate um, y the advocacy. It's, it's a unique partnership. I'm not going to go over this slide too much, but basically, as a consumer, when you sit on our panels um, and involved in all our processes, you're an equal, equal partner. You have equal say. Consumers, um, there's many different words that are used to describe a consumer. We use consumer review as someone that's involved in grant review, and consumer advocate, someone that actually participates as a research collaborator, not a test subject, but a research collaborator in our research proposals. So we've had, since 1993, over 2,700 consumers that have represented over 1,300 organizations. For, that have served on peer and programmatic review, and typically a uh, consumer will serve anything from one to three, five years. So our program cycle begins with the congressional appropriation, but I wanted to show this slide because of all of the points in our program cycle. Every single one of our research programs follows this program cycle, and you can see every place where a consumer is involved. And again, the consumer has equal say on all of our panels. So we have a programmatic panel that does the vision setting, and that basically is they look at all the gaps, uh, critical needs, immediate needs, and they set the vision for the year. And then, like myself, staff, I go and I prepare what we call award mechanisms, and we release those as funding opportunities. We have a pre-application receipt that we usually do an invite and not invite. And again, as a consumer, you have equal say in terms of deciding what gets invited for a full application and what doesn't. And then 
after we have our proposal receipt, um, consumers sit again as equal partners on our peer review panels where you sit with uh, those um, bench scientists as well as clinicians and, de and determining the scientific merit of the proposals. And following that, as I said, we make our funding recommendations at programmatic review and again, as a participant in the programmatic panel, you also get to make recommendations in terms of what gets funded and what doesn't get funded. So as you can see, you're integral to our processes. So to be on our programmatic panel, we usually look at those that have served at peer review to bring them into the programmatic panel, or we reach out to the advocacies to see who are the leaders in the field as consumers. But at peer review, we have a slightly different process. And, and, but it's important to know that in, in, um, in, in participating in our, in our programs, that you really need to be an active participant in, in some sort of advocacy or outreach or, or support organization and to be nominated by your organization. And it's also important that we, we don't expect you to come and speak just for yourself, but you're speaking for your community. This is your opportunity to speak to all of your, 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 your fellow advocates, your, your fellow consumers. And different programs use um, consumers differently. For example, Ovarian cancer, to be a consumer on the ovarian cancer research program, you need to be an ovarian cancer patient or survivor. For something like Rett syndrome, it's one of the one of the topics in the peer review medical research program. Since the individual can't be a consumer or be represented, usually it's a family member. When we have topics, and I also manage the peer review medical research program, which has all, all of the kidney uh, disorders and diseases. It, it really depends. For that, we, we look at someone like yourself, a patient and a survivor. And we have several steps in terms of um, submitting an application, a nomination by your organization, as well as a CV, and a personal statement, because we're really looking for that commitment. And we have a contractor, it's GDIT, that helps us with this. And there's someone called a consumer reviewer administrator that actually reviews your application and, and conducts a telephone conversation with you to see um, if you really have a commitment and, and, and you really would like to do this. On our website, we have a whole section about consumer involvement. And we have some information about us. Frequently asked questions. People have questions. What, is, what do I have to do? What does it mean? Am I going to be intimidated? And we, so we answer those questions, and then we are actually you can pull down the application package. And uh, consumer review administrators also work very, very closely with you in our peer review. As well, um, we also work very closely with the consumers at Programmatic Review to, to make sure that you understand what you need to do and that you feel comfortable and not intimidated. And when, when consumer review is a, that a nominator are reviewed, we look for your commitment to advocacy, your commitment to making a difference. That's really what it is. We don't expect you to know the science, but we expect you to be willing to learn the science and really to speak for your community and, and also to think about what is the impact? What difference does this research make? That's really what you bring to the table because if the research, it can have an immediate impact or it can have a long-term impact, but if it's not going to have any impact at all, then what good is it? I mean, it's, research is good for research's sake, but that's not what our research programs are about. And, and again, you know, we, we ask that the consumers bring a sense of urgency, because I think that's really important. Because on our panels, and I think on most review panels, you have bench scientists that often don't have firsthand knowledge or experience with the disease or condition for which they're either doing the research or for which they're reviewing. So as consumers, you really bring that experience and you bring all the all those nuances that are associated with that, that disease or condition that, that the bench scientists don't know. And even the clinicians, although they're very knowledgeable and they may treat you, I don't think they have if they don't have the first-hand experience that you do, then they don't always understand what you're going through. One of the last slides I want to show is there's another place that you also participate for several of our, and that is in the research effort. And several of our programs and other age funding agencies, including NIH and Susan B. Komen Foundation, uh, not only require but sometimes encourage consumer reviewers um, or advocates to be involved in the research. And 
We don't have any in, in the peer review medical research program, but we do have in some of our other programs. And that really is what we, we don't just require someone to say, okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna participate as a test subject, or I'm going to uh, reach out and try to get you specimens, et cetera. When we ask someone that, when we ask a scientist to include a consumer in a research effort, that means that they are to be considered to be equal partner and be part of the research design as well as part of the team collecting the data. So we see consumers as our true north and our compass. You are the reason why you exist and you're the reason why we continue to exist. You're involved in all parts of our program cycle and it's really the impact the impact on the research on your kidney condition that we're interested in. What is the impact of this research? And we demand that this innovation, we demand that this impact, and we ask that you bring that to the table and bring your perspective of your peers and, and really put, um, as Mr. Uh, McKnight said, bring the urgency forth. And that's what we ask the consumers to do on our panels. And also then we ask them to take the message back home uh, to the advocacies and to their fellow comrades uh, to let them know what we do and how we do it and how if they participate in our programs, what a difference you could make. So with you and with the way that I think we handle our program cycles, we hope that we're providing hope. Thank you.